high-class Double D Championship game between the Irish of Notre Dame and Jasper Trusberg. Hi, everyone. Rick Krasinski along with Larry Reed. Larry, both teams coming in. We don't see them play up around this area. And of course, we do see Notre Dame occasionally out in the Batavia region. So With a broken ankle, he broke it against Avoca. So the sick microphone is Notre Dame Irish. Kevin Rogers is out of today's game. And the game is in a way. Notre Dame controlling the opening. Tip Fanara has the opening basket. Notre Dame quickly off to a 2 nothing lead. Notre Dame in the white, the Wildcats from Jasper Troopsburg in the dark uniform. Notre Dame opens up in their 2-3 zone, which they play most of the time on defense. See how Jasper Troopsburg attacks at number 31 with the three-pointer. Price, and Price, one of the key players for the Wildcats, the starter since his freshman year, the senior, hitting the three. And half a minute into this game, a 3-2 Jasper Troopsburg lead. Otis, Otis Thomas. Tom is giving the lead right back to Notre Dame. The quick point guard for the Irish, cutting down the lane, getting the layup. He and saw that uh, Jasper Trusberg was in a man-to-man, -man, took his man right down the lane for the layup. Price again, this time a little short as he was in NBA range. And Price getting the save, so Trusberg hanging on to the basketball. Derek Butler cutting in, dishing off. Shot missed, rebounded by Rodgers. That's Paul Rodgers, the starting five for Notre Dame. It's Vinny Fernara, 22. Mike Sisson, the junior, number 23. Mike Reddick, the key player. Or I should say one of the key players for Notre Dame, wearing number 30. Rodgers getting the pass, shots missed. And Otis Thomas, the point guard, number 33. Paul Rodgers, number 42. For the Jasper Trusberg Wildcats, it's Adam Van Skyver wearing number 10. Colin Butler, or Button, wearing number 12. Chris Nichols, Number 24 is a three-pointer taken and made. Well, Jasper Tewsbury opened up with some outside shooting. They've had four shots, one, one uh, layup they missed. The other three were three-pointers, and they hit two of them. And Nichols hitting the three, and also Sam Price wearing offensive number 30. Offensive foul. And Derek Butler wearing number 32. The offensive foul going against Notre Dame. So Tewsbury with a 6-4 lead and the basketball. I might mention, Rick, that the winner of this game will be playing... Wednesday night at uh, I think it's 545 against the winner of the Class D final later today between uh, Elba and Romulus to represent Section 5 at the state or the regional tournament next weekend. Mike Reddick picking up the foul on the charge call. 6-10 to go here in this opening quarter. A 6-4 Jasper Trusper League. Pass inside knocked away on the floor but Trusburg hanging on to and here's the 15-footer taken by Anna Van Skyver. It's missed and Notre Dame with the basketball. Spernaro will bring it back up the floor for the Irish. JT still in their man-to-man -man defense. Thomas, he's going to take the three off the rim, high bounce, hitting over up the over backboard. the backboard. So, referees for tonight's game or this morning's game actually are uh, Tom Tychester holding the ball down there under the basket and Mike Landino down at the other end. This game played last Saturday, 11:30 start at the Big House, the Rochester War Memorial. Nice crowd for an early game too. Notre Dame the last few years when they played here. We're a Class D school playing the 7 o'clock game, but moving up to Double D this year, they get the 11-30 start. Another three taken, missed, and Fanara up high to get the rebound. 6-4, Jasper Trutzberg on top with five and a half to go here in this opening quarter of the Double D championship game. Fanara behind the back off to Thomas. Thomas with room in the lane, 10-footer, pulls up, and it goes in. Roll. Thomas with four points for Notre Dame in the first three minutes, ties the game at six. First time I've seen Notre Dame play since Christmas time in the Christmas tournament, and it looks like they're trying to take that man-to-man -man and penetrate the lane and see what they can get off of that. Defensively, they're still in their 2-3 zone. Derek Butler taking the shot, missed, rebound but an offensive Price. rebound as Sam Price was there. Price getting it back to Butler. Butler's shot bouncing off the back of the rim, and Fanara tipping it over to Rodgers, and Sisson will bring it up the floor for Notre Dame. Tied at six with four and a half to go here in this opening quarter. Both teams coming in, 22 and 0 records. Redding, turnaround, off the rim, missed. Rebounded by Jasper Troopsburg. Derek Butler bringing it up the floor for the Wildcats. Giving off the price, price cutting inside, back out. Van Skyver getting it over to Nichols. Nichols shot bouncing around and for now with another, another rebound. rebound. He's had quite a few here early in the game. 
Halfway through the first quarter, it's four to or six to six. Nick, or the two three pointers by JT are all they've been able to get, but uh, it's been enough so far. Thomas tried to get that pass inside it, but it was knocked away. And a traveling call, no foul. A traveling call before the contact was made. And Notre Dame getting the ball back. As you said, Larry, Jasper Truthbrook hitting a couple early three pointers to get the six quick points, but that's the only two shots they made in today's game so far. They're not hesitant 51. about putting the ball up from outside. They've taken mostly three pointers, a couple of 15 footers, and I think one layup is all they've attempted here. Bernard giving it to Reddick, cutting through 17 footer. It's in. Nice Reddick can play inside, he can play outside. Reddick came up about halfway through his sophomore season for the Irish, won a sectional title a couple years ago. They lost in the finals last year, but looking to get the title back. And I believe it was Romulus was the team that beat him last year, and Romulus will be in the D finals tonight. There's another three. Derek Butler. So Jasper Trusberg with three different players. Each one of their outside threes. players has taken the, taken the three for him and you made it. They haven't been shy about it. Thomas pulling up, drains it again. So Thomas off to a good start here in this opening quarter. Looks like he feels he can take his man one-on-one -on -one anytime he wants and get a good shot. That time he drove in, backed off a step, and put the jumper up before the defense had a chance to react. There's an NBA -er. long three. That was an NBA three. Well, you're right. They're not afraid to put those threes up, are they? Thomas, again, the quick point guard for Notre Dame. He can slash it inside. If they come off, he can dish. Rogers takes a shot. He hits it. Oh, he was left alone on the, on the right side there, and he got that 15-footer easily. Rogers bucket giving Notre Dame a three-point lead. It's 12 to nine, two and a half to go here in this opening quarter double D championship game from the Rochester War Memorial. Well, they're getting the pass inside shot. Offensive rebound for Jasper Trusberg is getting in was Chris Nichols. Price took the shot. Nichols rebounded it. Nichols pass intercepted by Fanaro. So Notre Dame with a 12-9 lead. Two minutes to go here in the opening quarter. And the Irish with the basketball as Otis Thomas will bring it up the floor. JT's gone to a zone now. They were getting beat pretty easily on that man-to-man, -man, so they've gone to a 1-2-2 zone. See how Notre Dame attacks. Looks like they're setting up their attack now, getting people where they want them. Rogers open in the corner, has it. Rogers with the fake, now the shot off the front of the rim. Little ball fake there, and he got his man in the air, went around him, took the shot, but it wasn't long enough. Van Skyver with good position after the missed shot came right off. He had boxed out, got the rebound. And another long three. That one missed as Nichols had taken it. But Jasper Trusberg hanging out of the basketball as Derek Butler has it. We've seen on occasion down here, Rick, where teams get mixed up on the high school three-point line and the uh, professional three-point line, but I don't think Jasper Trusberg cares. They just seem to be ready to put it up whenever they want. Yeah, as I was just wondering too, I was thinking the same thing, whether they're they're getting confused with the two lines, but or maybe they just don't care where they are and it's just like let they're it ready go. to put it up. Uh, number 12 just came into the lineup for uh, Jasper Trusberg. His name is Colin Button. Danny Kaufman also checked into the game for Notre Dame as he replaces Mike Sissenkoff wearing number 32. Inside, no whistle on the play as Price had driven inside. Ball on the floor and finally comes free and Reddick has it. Price it would start out playing on the wing. Now they moved him into the high post. The last two times he's touched the ball, it's been at the high post. And JT still in that zone defense. This time it looks more like a 2-3. Rogers with the travel. So head coach Michael Paul making his first substitution. Danny Kaufman coming into the game and as I mentioned in the beginning normally Kevin Rogers would have been checking in but Rogers is out with a fractured ankle he's going to be out for at least a couple weeks so a big loss for the Irish you might see him he's sitting on the Notre Dame bench a couple a couple spots down from uh, JV coach Dave Farrell another three taken and missed so Jasper Trutzberg with three threes but the percentage can't be too high right now because they've taken quite a few of them and only hit three so probably shooting around 20% on the threes, I'd have to imagine. There's just turnover by stand. Notre Dame. Well, we don't know. That may be their style of play. They may be doing that all year long, figuring that if they take enough of them and make a few, they're going to make up the difference. But so far, that's what it looks like their, their philosophy is, at least against the zone defense. 45 second shot clock. Well, he saw Price lets it go. He's, he's out on the wing that time. So the basket tying it up. We're down to one second. Thomas lets it go off the, the front, front of the rim. rim. Got it. Had a chance there, but it comes off the front of the rim, so we completed the first quarter of play. It's Notre Dame 12, Jasper Trutzberg 12. We'll take a short time game between undefeated Notre Dame of Batavia and undefeated Jasper Trutzberg. 
And at the end of one, we're still even. It's 12 to 12. So both teams unbeaten. We're tied at the end of one. Jasper Trusberg with the ball to start the second quarter of play. Pass inside for Van Skyver. Knocked away by Mike Reddick and Notre Dame with the ball. Both teams playing zone now here. Let's see what JT, now they're back to their man-to-man -man to start the second quarter. Notre Dame in that first quarter, six field goals for their 12 points, while JT hitting four shots, but they were all three-pointers. And we are tied at 12, a half minute into the second quarter of play. Mike Rundick with the ball on the wing, driving inside, letting the shot go a little short. Ball tapped around and then rebounded by Jasper Kruzberg. And a foul there on number 42. That would be uh, Paul Rogers, I believe. Even Bullock had the inside position and a substitution Chris now. Nichols back in the lineup for JT. He replaces Adam Van Skyver. Now they've, this time Price is down in the right corner. He's played on the high post, he's played on the right wing. Now they got him down on the right baseline. So they must move him around trying to free him up for some shots. Butler with the 22 footer spinning out, tapped around for an hour. Again, Bernard's gonna have five or six rebounds already in that this was basketball kind of a, game. In the right place at the right time rebound, but the other but one's really, <laughs> They count. Let's see if Otis Thomas tries to take his man again like he did early in the first quarter. That time he penetrated and kicked it out. But Arrow with the ball behind the back, pulling in, trying to dish off. Nice pick and roll on with Reddick. Reddick with his fourth point of the game, giving Notre Dame the lead 14 to 12. Button's going to take the three. That one's short for now. Another rebound. They're, they're definitely not hesitant about putting it up. Thomas getting a step, pulling up. 12-footer doesn't go. And Three rebounded by even Bullock. JT coming back down. Driving inside. Shot missed by Butler. And Reddick with the rebound that time for Notre Dame. Thomas getting it inside. Reddick's going to be fouled. Fouled by Bullock, I believe, on the pass. Bullock reaching over, picking up the foul. First foul called against Jasper Trusberg. Against Notre Dame, so it's pretty. I like the game we did last night with Honeyway Falls Line. I think we only had three fouls in the entire first Second half. half of play. the game important, though, is remember HFL hit a lot of foul shots. As a got. lot. They were what, 23 for 26, Something I think like it that, was. Yeah. There's a long. But our long three. But right there for the rebound was Rodgers, and he puts it back up and in. So Paul Rodgers with his fourth a point bad of shot the game. became a good pass. You know, that's one thing, too, with those long threes, too. I mean, in that case, yeah, the shot wasn't a, didn't come off, but it came off right. But threes will give you a long rebound sometimes. Yeah, you that's keep why your guards have to be aware to rebound. But that time for Notre Dame, Rodgers was right there with good position to get the ball right off the glass and had the easy putback for the basket. Price pulling in. Shots missed. It's going to go down to Notre Dame. Price was back in on the high post that time, and he caught the ball, made a fake, and the defense went with the fake, and he had an open shot, but he missed it. Lipping a little bit as he got up off the floor. I think he must have came down Maybe wrong he stepped on the somebody's, ankle. Yeah, he could have stepped on somebody's foot as he landed. Five and a half to go here in the second quarter. Notre Dame on top of Jasper Tootsburg by a score of 16 to 12. The winner goes on, the loser goes home. Right now, Notre Dame with the four Block. point lead. Roger's shot was blocked that time. There's Price down in the corner with it. Kicking it back out on top to Derek Butler. Butler wearing number 32. Button, he's going to take the three. Button actually looks like he has a struggle a little bit when he takes the three. Doesn't seem like it really comes off that smooth. Rebound by Coughlin that time. Give it to Otis Thomas. Rogers on the right side with the ball. Reddick cut off as he tried to cut through. Now he's open on top of the key. Reddick spinning in the lane. He's going to pull up 14-footer just off the front of the river. There's Rogers right there for the offensive rebound. Had the shot blocked. Reddick again. Reddick turns around. And Short that on shot, that shot. Three opportunities there for Notre Dame. They came up empty. There's another three. Nichols taking it. He has one three in the game for an hour again with position thing, and the rebound. Jasper Trufberg hasn't really got too many offensive rebounds. I can remember one, I think, that they've rebounded off of. Off a long three. Thomas spinning in the lane, a block ball. Foul on Derek Butler. Number 10, 
replaces number 12 in the Jasper Adam lineup. Van Skyver, one of the starters, coming back in. Reddick out to Rogers. Rogers, 18 footer. Missed, and Reddick, though, grabbing the ball. So another offensive rebound for Notre Dame. Rogers, another chance. That, that time, time he, he takes advantage. Wide open on the left baseline. Otis Thomas spotted him, gave him the ball, and he put it in. Six point lead for the Irish. Timeout, Jasper Trusberg. Timeout taken with 3.57 to go here in the second quarter. Head coach Tom Price of the Jasper Trusberg Wildcats taking a timeout as Notre Dame has opened up a six point lead. It's 18 to 12. And in the second quarter, Larry Notre Dame outscoring JT six to nothing. So Jasper Trusberg without any points so far here in the second quarter. We played four minutes and three seconds in. And all their points coming at four three-pointers. So it looks funny looking down the score sheet, not seeing any field goals, foul shots for Jasper Trutzberg. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Jasper goes back to that zone that they played a little bit at the end of the first quarter because Notre Dame seems to thrive against that man-to-man. -man. So I wouldn't be surprised if they go back zone. And I don't know if Coach Price is talking to his, to his players about maybe being a little bit more patient on offense because they're just firing up those threes, and when they're not going in, that can be kind of devastating. They haven't hit anything here in the second quarter, and it's been a little over four minutes. Some of the Notre Dame fans here today watching the game and Let's making see a if trip for Batavia for the early start. And of course, the Oakfield plays later today. There might be some fans who are here to watch both games. Should mention the Oakfield game that you were talking about will be on tomorrow night right here on Cable 5 at 8 o'clock. As yes, Oakfield, Alabama, go up against Lions and Perry will be on Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And then Elba will either be Wednesday or Thursday. We're not sure on that one so yet. Like Notre Dame's gone to a 1-3-1 one, one zone instead of their traditional 2-3 this time. Maybe trying to make Jasper adjust to their defense. Well, they're quicking it over to Van Skyver on the wing. Getting Bullock the pass inside. Blocked. Bullock. Reddick blocked the shot. Well, Jasper still in the man to man. Often to Fanara quickly down. Thomas, he's going to take the three. That's off the short, uh, front of the rim. And it goes right to even Bullock for Jasper Trutzberg. Now driving inside, pulling up with a 10 footer is Butler. Fanara, Fanara bailing, and he Put got enough down. of it to get it over to Reddick. And almost a steal by Jasper, but they didn't quite come up with it. They're going to have to hurry to get it over the timeline. They're running out of time. Thomas, is, no, they're going to call 10. And look at, you know, one thing with a 45-second shot clock, you can look up and kind of help the referees out. I don't out. think Mike's got to complain on that one. If anything, they got an extra second. Yeah, the, the clock's out with 33. I think Mike might be saying that they reset the clock before Notre Dame established possession That's one thing. And that, that's a key thing with the shot clock. It doesn't, it is not supposed to start until possession is gained. So when the ball was being tapped around, the shot clock shot to start, but sometimes they hit that button a little early. Pull up, 15 there's footer, the first, the first field goal of the game. 24, and Chris Nichols. So Chris Nichols with five points in the game as he hit the. Notre Dame's coming right footer. back. Reddick with a long shot. Van Skyver going to the corner, ball going out of bounds as Fanara tried to get there. There was one of those long rebounds, the 18 foot shot taken, and then going out of bounds in the corner. Down to two minutes, 30 seconds to go here in the second quarter of play. Notre Dame on top of Jasper Trusberg, 18 to 14. Another three. This time it's in. Oh, and for Jasper. The Chris Nichols, his second Full three of the pressure game. pressure here by the Trusberg. Thomas, though, that time breaking the timeline oh. and a foul called. Jasper Trusberg foul number 10. Adam Van Skyver picking up his first personal foul, third team foul. Neither team in any type of foul trouble here with 2.10 remaining in the second quarter. That was only the third team foul for JT Notre Dame with only two team fouls. Reddick, a little screen and roll. They tried it once before and it worked. This time the ball was a little bit high. Pick and roll, very effective play. She said it worked earlier, tried to do it again, passed a little bit high that time. And Jasper Trusberg with the ball, only trailing by one. Notre Dame did have a six-point lead at one There's time. Price. Price trying to give him the lead, but that shot misfired. And it bounces Reddick, right out Reddick. to Reddick. So Thomas will bring it up for Notre Dame. Thomas cutting into the lane, off the glass, doesn't go in. There's some contact there, but no call was made. Derek Butler. 
Fans wanted a travel call. Here's Price on the right side. Price kicking it back out. Butler driving inside, pulling up, taking the shot, miss. Coughlin tied up, and a whistle and a jump ball as he was tied up with Sam Price. The possession arrow in Notre Dame's favor. 124 now, remaining here in the second quarter play. Notre Dame with a one-point lead. Lock 18 in full, full court pressure here. Thomas again will just bring it up himself, gets over the timeline. And Skyver coming up trying to steal it from behind. Reddick will take the three. And right there was Bullock. Bullock for the rebound. So JT with the ball with 110 remaining. They trail by a point. It's 18 to 17. Well, even with that, even with that lapse of about four minutes when they didn't score, they could get right back. There they are in it right there. And Butler, Butler hitting the three. Notre Dame started out the quarter, Larry, with a 6-0 run, but now eight straight points for Jasper Trutzberg, and they have the lead 20 to 18. Reddick down to Rogers. Another collision over there. Rogers takes the shot. He and had his foot right on the line. So that's a two-pointer for Rogers. Paul Rogers with 40 or 42 points. Eight points in the game. Number 42, Paul Rogers. Eight you points. Always in the what game. you wore on your shirt. Everybody man, oh man, you, you aren't kidding. And we're tied at 20. The shot clock is off. Time clock down to 25 seconds. So Jasper Trusper could play for the last shot here if they want. It looks like that's well, what should, they're going to do. That's what it looks like, but with this team. As soon as I get that opening, I think for the they'll three probably pointer. wait till about two and then fire it up. Price is in on the high post this time. No, excuse me, he's not. That's 30. I thought that was 31. Back down on to the eight seconds. Over on the left side. Now they're Back down to five. Top to Van Sky. We're down to three. Nichols passing inside. The shot's off by That's Bullock, good. and it's good. So right before the horn goes. Even Bullock getting the pass inside, taking the shot off the glass, and that basket will give Jasper Trutzberg a two-point lead as both teams go into the locker room here at halftime. Jasper Trutzberg, 22, Notre Dame of Batavia, 20. We'll take a short timeout, come back to recap the first half scoring and have from the Rochester War Memorial Section 5 Class Double D Championship game. We're at halftime between Notre Dame and Jasper Trutzberg and the Wildcats of JT with a 22 to 20 lead. Recap the scoring in the first half. First for Jasper Trutzberg, leading the way was Chris Nichols as he had eight points. Sam Price and Derek Butler each with six. And even Bullock with the basket right before the horn went to give JT the lead with two points. For Notre Dame, Paul Rogers leading the way with eight points. Otis Thomas finishing the first half with six. Mike Reddick had four. And Vinny Fanaro with a basket. Jasper Trutzberg will have the ball to inbound. So an exciting first half, Larry. And Jasper Trutzberg hitting six three-pointers, only two field goals in that first half for their 22 points. Yeah, they took, I don't know. We didn't keep track of how many field goal attempts they took from beyond the three-point line, but there were many. And uh, here again, Notre Dame's looking like a 1-3-1 one, one zone, and then they kind of shift into a 2-3 after the ball gets into the forecourt. Let's see if they keep it the same philosophy. There they go inside. Dan Skyver inside to Bullock. Bullock taking the shot. He's fouled, so he'll go to the free throw line. I think we got the, you kind of got the impression that first half, Rick, with all the three-point shots that, that uh, Jasper was taking that and missing that they were out of it. But you look up at the scoreboard, and they got a two-point lead, which is kind of surprising. Well, one thing with that three-point field goal, it can get you back in the game in a hurry. All you do is hit a couple of them on a couple of trips down the floor. I think Notre Dame might have felt the same way, like they were playing better basketball, but heck, we're tied or we're now down two. And Bullock hit one out of two there. Reddick rebounds. So now a 23 to 20 lead. Mike Sisson going to the basket. Nice right. move there by the junior. And Sisson getting his first bucket of the game. And pulling Notre Dame to within one, 23, 22. You know, Notre Dame's kind of lines up in a 1-3-1. One, one, and then Sisson drops back into the top guard spot there, make it a 2-3. Just to put a little pressure on the ball, I think, as they enter it. Bullock again is going to take the shot. He's got it. Huh? So even Bullock. Scoring two points in the first half on that final shot. Comes out and scores a quick three here for five points in the game. And Price with the ball over to Van Skyver. Steal off the press that time. Looks like Jasper may have changed their philosophy a little bit. Oops, no, I <laughs> there, there too soon. Nichols taking the shot. Ball tapped around before Rogers finally coming up with it. Uh, the first two times they had the ball, they went inside to Bullock with it. I thought maybe they were going to try that more often, but then they launched their first three there. Certain habits are hard to break, you know. Here's Reddick, nice move in the baseline. The shot doesn't go. Price with the rebound for Jasper Trutzberg. I was talking to a fan from Jasper Trutzberg at halftime, and he said that this Price 
player is is a there was a whole family of prices down there the coach is one of them and they had a couple other brothers that graduated a few years ago so he said this is all the same family kind of a basketball family i guess there goes over to van skyver van skyver inside bullet 10 foot turnaround missed and rogers is right there for the rebound good defense by notre dame that time he didn't have a good look at the basket Kind of a fall away. There's Otis Thomas going. Thomas to the with hole. that quick move to the basket doesn't go. And Bullock's there for the rebound. So Thomas got a step, but doesn't get the basket. Butler spinning at half court. Six Notre minutes remaining here in the third quarter. We'll see where Price is playing this time. Looks like he's out on the right wing right now. There's another pass inside. Get inside to Bullock. the Bullock shot goes in. That one. They definitely have gone to their big man more here in the third quarter than they did the whole first half. The whistle the Van Skyver is yep. going to get hit with the foul to be his second of the game. Yeah, they've already taken more field goal attempts, I think, already in the first two minutes and 15 seconds than they did the entire first half. Everything was from three point land in the first half of play. 27 22 Jasper lead. Trusper Jasper playing Trusper. man to man defense as they have most of the game except for a few minutes at the end of the first quarter. Benara getting inside, he's fouled. Fouled by Price. Sam Price picking up his first foul of the game. And Vinny Fernara will go to the free throw line to shoot two for the Irish. The trail by five points with 535 remaining here in the second quarter. Notre Dame in the second quarter started off on a 6-0 run. Vinny Fernara makes the first one. But then Notre Dame only scoring one more basket in that second quarter. And Fenera hitting both free throws to pull Notre Dame to within three. It's 27-24. And Sisson trying for a steal in the backcourt. Butler has it over to Nichols. Nichols going to pull up 17-footer. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing it in. Nice bounce for Chris Nichols. Rogers quickly over to Reddick. Reddick stepping inside Bullock. A block, yes. Blocking call against uh, number and it was a good cause. Bullock, Bullock. just stop, stepped out. Now, I don't think he had he he was squared up on him. No. Now, I got to agree with the call. Of course, the JT fans wanting the wanting the charge call, as you'll always have in that block charge situation. Here's Rogers. Had a tip from behind. No whistle oh, and a foul. On, on Nichols, I believe. I talked to a number of officials, and they all, I think almost to the man, they all say that that block charge call is the toughest one they have to make because it's a split-second decision, and it's just a matter of a, you know, a, maybe an, a couple of inches of the way they have their feet planted, the way their body is set, and so on. It's a real tough call. Paul Rogers with eight points in the first half. First Miss. free throw hitting the back of the rim. And again, Paul's brother Kevin is out of today's game as he broke his ankle against Avoca. He's a key player for the Irish as he had a good season coming in off the bench. And of course, they, he would miss the, if they win today, he'd miss the uh, Wednesday night playoff game to be representing Section 5. I doubt if he'd be ready to, even for the uh, regionals. They said a couple weeks, I believe, and it was a hairline yeah, fracture. It's supposed to be at least a couple weeks. So a key loss for the Irish as he's an important part of this team coming in off the bench. Shot missed, Van Skyver. And he's going to be foul. whistled coming over the back of Rogers. They picked up quite a few fouls here in the last minute and a half. That's their fifth team foul, and we've got almost five minutes to go in the third quarter. So again, as you get down near the end, this could be important. They could put him in the double bonus earlier. And Van Skyver picking up his third personal. That causes Coach Tom Price to make a change as he has somebody up at the scorer's table. Fernara over to Sisson. Sisson squaring up. Had a good look. Ball bouncing out, though. Fernara, an offensive rebound. Off the glass, missed again. Reddick tipped it back up and in. Six point of the game for Reddick, pulling Notre Dame to within two. 29 27, four and a half to go here in the third quarter. Been a back and forth game right from the start. Nichols inside, Van Skyver driving baseline, had it rejected by, by Reddick. And Notre Dame with a chance to either tie or take the lead with this trip down the floor. Here's Thomas. Manara, he's going to take a three on the way. Doesn't go. No, by contrast, Notre Dame hasn't taken very many threes at all. Maybe about three or four. I was going to say, I think only game. three or four and haven't hit one yet. They don't have a three on the books. There's another three. That one coming up short. Nickel, so with the rebound. Fanara, though, tried to throw it off Fanara, and he was able to control the ball and keep it in play. This and handing off to Rodgers. 
Thomas looking to move at the foul line over to Rogers. Rogers putting it down to the floor, coming inside, dishing off to Reddick, held ball. And the arrows, Notre Dame's favor, so it's going to stay down at this end of the floor. And now substitution said Van Skyver with three personal fouls going out of the game. They'll bring in Colin Button. Button played some in the first half. He was tried. To, I remember seeing him take two or three from this right wing over here that were were a little bit short as far as his offensive contribution goes. Rogers going to take a three. There it is. Paul Rogers, Notre Dame's first three-point basket Here's of the Notre game. Notre Dame a one-point lead here with three and a half to go. 30 to 29. The Irish up by one. Notre Dame extending their defense a little bit out to half court. It is a 1-3-1, one, one, and then they drop back into that 2-3 after they get up to the forecourt. Button cut through, pass a little long, but he chased it down. Now he gets it over. Price shots up and in. Back to a one-point lead for Jasper Truthberg. 31-30, 2.55 to go here in the third quarter. Rogers is open under the basket. No, Nichols got back to cover him there. Thomas looking inside, wanted to give it to Reddick, changed his mind, kicked it back out on top to Fadara. Here's Rodgers, 18-footer, it's in. Notre Dame seems to be getting some good looks against this man-to-man -man here. 14 points for Paul Rodgers. Especially when they run their offense through maybe one or two cycles of it. Nichols had the ball tapped away. Notre Dame with the steal. Thomas out in front. There's a whistle. Butler. But the foul is going to be going against Jasper Trutzberg. So Notre Dame will have the basketball. They have a one-point lead, 32-31. to 31. That's the sixth foul. Next one will put Notre Dame in the bonus. And Notre Dame only has committed one team foul here in the second half. So there's a definite advantage for Notre Dame on the foul. Going to be on the foul situation. But our long cross-court pass hitting Otis Thomas. Sisson back to Thomas. Rodgers, he's open, squares up. He's got it. He's been a important factor here. Rodgers with a good look at the basket. Nine points here in the third quarter, 17 on the game. So right now, Paul Rodgers, the hot hand for Notre Dame with 145 remaining here in the third quarter. And that basket giving Notre Dame a 35-31 lead. Nichols losing, and that's going to be an over and back violation. He got to it before it went out of bounds, but as he tried to save it, he didn't have an angle to get it back into the front court. And Notre Dame with the momentum right now, a timeout taken. Notre Dame with a 35-31 lead. Clock stop with 139 remaining. But Paul Rogers, Larry, here in the third quarter with nine points. And he's been the difference for the Irish as he has given them the four-point lead, 35 to 31. He answered the call there when they when they got down by about uh, three or four, came back and hit those threes. And of course, let's not forget what Fenera has been doing on the boards. He's been the, the main rebounder so far today. And so far here in this third quarter, Jasper Trutzberg, Larry, in that first half of play, only with two field goals, they had six three-pointers. They don't have a three-pointer here and really haven't taken even that many as they've been going inside more to Bullock. Bullock with five points here in the third quarter of play. Nichols and Price each with the basket. But as I said, they kind of seem like they almost changed their no, offensive well, philosophy. They did in the beginning, and I think Notre Dame's extended their zone a little bit too to try and maybe take away some of those quick threes and make them work for their shot. So that might be a factor in it too. If you notice, when they come over midcourt, uh, Sisson is usually right out there to meet the ball handler and then they kind of drop back into their 2-3 But I think that initial pressure is making it a little bit more difficult for him to get started There's a look at Notre Dame's Paul Rogers wearing number 42 He's had the hot hand here in the third quarter Rogers With 17 points on the game nine of those coming here in the third quarter Notre, Notre Dame, Dame. With, with the ball here to try to stretch that lead a minute and a half to go in the third quarter Reddick with a nice fake and to Reddick, the jam and the foul. So Reddick got a step that time. Big play right there. That gets the crowd up off their feet. Chris Nichols picking up his second foul. And as you said now, that is the 17th foul on Jasper Trutzberg. So Notre Dame already into bonus now with 127 remaining in the third. And the 10th foul is double bonus. Jasper brought in a, a, a replacement here, a 6'5 player, number 25, by the name of Chris Foster. I think it's his first appearance today. 
And There's now, that extended zone, if you see what I'm talking about. Now that Butler dishing off inside and a foul. So he gives Foster. it to Foster, as you said, just came into the game. Foster will go to the free throw line for Jasper Trutzberg. Paul Rod picking up his second foul. Only the second team foul on Notre Dame with 113 remaining here in the third quarter of play. Notre Dame stretching out a seven point lead now. Foster hits the first one. Of course, this reminder will stay here after today's game for the naming of the Double D All Tournament team along with the most valuable player. Foster second shot spinning out for Naro with another rebound for Notre Dame and the Irish coming back down. Otis Thomas with the basketball. 38-32, six point lead. Here's Rogers kicking it back out. Sisson. Sisson with the three, doesn't go. Did everything but go down. That might be his first shot of the day, I don't remember. Well, he's got the basket, he had to drive on the layup, on the layup earlier. That's right, he did. See how they extend that zone though? They're picking up a little bit farther out and then they drop back. Foster. Foster's gonna take the shot, doesn't go, and Reddick with I the rebound. I think that pass might have been for, Bullet, for Butler, and he stepped in front of it. It was a good shot, though. And just like Sisson's shot, though, just didn't go down. Here's Reddick kicking back out. Thomas gonna take the three, spinning in and out. Nichols, Nichols with, the with the rebound. Half a minute to go here in the third quarter. Notre Dame by six. Back down to 20 seconds, Butler. Get over to Button, back out, the major downtown, league. three off the front of the rim. That was a heap. That was definitely beyond the NBA three. Back down to seven, down to six. Thomas, Coach Rapone telling him, and Thomas misunderstood, but almost hit the three. I think he thought there was only like two seconds left. He heard Coach Mike Rapone yelling for him. He let it go, almost got it to go down. One second still remaining on the clock. Be pretty hard for, although, not impossible to get a shot off this quickly. Quick pass to Nichols. And Rogers did a nice job of just standing up straight not to allow the shot to be taken. So a big third quarter for the Irish and Notre Dame as they take a 38 to 32 lead into the fourth quarter. We'll take a short time. <laughs> you might have a tough time. Fourth quarter is just underway. Notre Dame on top of Jasper Trutzberg, 38 to 32. Foul on uh, Sisson, I believe, there. At the Mike Sisson picking up his first foul, only the third team foul. Again, Notre Dame into bonus already as Jasper Trusberg has seven in team fouls. Only the third team foul on Notre Dame. Notre Dame with the six point lead, 38 32, with 7.50 to go here in the fourth quarter. Both teams undefeated, 22 and 0. Nichols, a long three. That went off the front of the rim, and Reddick right there for the rebound. Thomas, nice pass inside. Fanara doesn't go. Reddick tapping it around. Bullock, and then it goes out to Sisson. So Notre Dame with the ball. Fanara again, got a step on the baseline. Nice move by Vinny Fanara. His sixth point of the game, but he got a step, drove it to the basket, got it to go, and a now an eight-point lead, 40 to 32. There's that extended zone, and they just drop back and kind of match up in the 2-3. But it's making it tougher for Jasper to get those clean looks that they were getting in the first half. Bullock's going to take it short. But inside was Price with the position. Shot spinning off the rim. Panera, and Panera again. Rodgers with the ball. Had it knocked away by Nichols. And a help ball, it's going to be Jasper Trutzberg ball. Nichols got a hand out that time to knock it away. And Rodgers and Nichols tying up. Apparently they forgot to change the uh, directional because Jasper had the ball at the start of the quarter. So that's the first tie up since then. So it's got to be Notre Dame's ball. They must have forgot to switch it. And yeah, they keep it in the book down there. That's really the official way to do it and then they had one the other night in the semifinals where they actually had put the ball in play before they realized it then they had quite a conversation about whether or not they could correct it they eventually did Sisson getting called on the travel call so Jasper Trusper will get it back now with 624 remaining here in the fourth JG trailing Notre Dame by eight it's 40 to 32 
They got praise all around the wing again. He's played a variety of positions in their offense. Sisson almost with the steal. Butler pulling up. It looks like he got fouled on that three, did he? Yeah, they called the foul, and he was definitely taking the three, so. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot three. So a chance, if he can hit all three, to pull J.D. back to within five as they trail by eight. Fox stop, 6.04 to go here in the fourth quarter. He's got the first of three. He's got two. Well, Jasper still only trails by five if he makes this one. And the way they shoot the three. Now Jasper doesn't have anybody back on defense. If they can, if Notre Dame can capitalize on this. And assistant's got his hands up there saying, hey, I'm wide open. Now they, they didn't, quickly they get didn't back. want to take the chance, I guess, with a six to five point lead. The Butler hitting all three of his free throws. Sisson's going to take the three. Doesn't go. Rebounded. Foul on Rodgers. That's only the 15th foul against Notre Dame, so Jasper will get the ball out of bounds. Is Rodgers' third personal, though. And with 5.55 remaining here in the fourth, don't know if you'd really call it that he's in foul trouble. He picks up that fourth one, you immediately are in foul trouble. But Especially being a key player to their offense like he is. Nichols, three, and Another foul, foul. On Redding. Microphone, watch a timeout. That's two times in a row they fouled him on three-point shots. three-point shot. Actually, the bump came after he had released the ball. I didn't really see it. I was watching the ball, and all of a sudden I heard the whistle blow and saw the shooter lying on the floor. Well, how do you actually call that? I mean, once the shot's gone and then you get hit, is that a shooting foul, or well, would it be depending on... I've seen it called where it's after the shot. It's just a, a regular personal foul, which... I think is the way it should be called if the ball was that. And, I, and I think the shot. that's what we're looking at Coach Michael Paul right now. I think that's what he's saying. The ball was definitely gone before Reddick made contact. I didn't and, see and if they awarded him. The, they but and, I, and he the, put three fingers up. So I think they're going to give him three-point That's a shot. judgment call on the referee's part, whether or not, it, you know, how soon did it occur to, to affect the shot. Sometimes, you know, the, the fact that he gets there just as you're, you know, it's a, a split-second type of thing. But it could be called as after the shot just to give the ball out of bounds. We'll see. Mike's not happy anyway. Should mention, too, the Notre Dame girls winning their first sectional title. The first time a Notre Dame girls team has won a sectional title last Friday night. Well, we've got a several schools here that could get doubles. We've got HFL, HFL that got their already double. Notre Dame, Dame Elba could do it, chance. I believe. They, their girls, right, won. Elba's girls won on Friday. And the Elba boys playing. Well, the game this tonight, well, they actually played last Saturday night. Christina Volpe, outstanding sophomore. What a season she's had for the Notre Dame Lady Irish. Well, Price made the first one. This could pull Jasper within two points here if he makes the other two. Well, he's got four in a row. He's got, or oh, I'm sorry, that was Butler the first time. This yeah, this is, is Price. This is Price. He's got, they've, they've, they're shooting well from the foul line here. They're just five in a row. And now six, six in, a in, row. in a row. Now they're going with some full court pressure here to try to try to get back into it. They're yeah. into it anyway. But Benaro with the ball. And it gets over to Reddick. Now Notre Dame in a two-on-one situation with Sisson pulling it back out. So the six free throws in a row pulling Jasper Kruisberg to within two. It's 40 to 38. 5.25 to go here in the fourth quarter. Tom is inside Reddick. Had it knocked away by Bullock, but then Reddick got it back. Bullock got a hand on it. There are down the baseline to Sisson. Shot clock is down to 10, now down to 7. Thomas going to drive, kicking it back out. Sisson with the step, driving to the basket, gets the lamp, has to go in. So Sisson with a couple of drives to the basket in the second half. We saw Reddick get inside for the slam, and Fernaro with a nice baseline move. That's the fourth Still got almost five minutes like to go, so there's lots of time left in the game. Thomas getting a hand on it, and the steal quickly to Fernaro. Fernaro. Nichols coming back. Fanara had it knocked away. No foul on the play, but Notre Dame will have the ball as Nichols got the ball. Knocking out of the hands of Vinnie Fanara. 42 play right there, especially if Notre Dame doesn't capitalize on this uh, out of bounds because that would have been a six-point lead. Yeah, and at first it looked like Fanara had the clear shot to the basket, but Nichols did a good oh, job to get back. Otis, Otis Thomas, Thomas, a big three for Notre Dame. He had six points all in the first quarter, his first point since, and a huge three for the Irish. Thomas opening up a seven-point. Notre Dame lead, it's 45-38. Well, 
Clock down to 4.20 to go here. Price wants the ball over on the right wing. Nick goes. Three is missed, but an offensive rebound by Button. And again, there's one of those long rebounds on the missed three. Price wants the ball on the right side for Jasper. He's He's been calling for it. He didn't get it the last time around. Butler's shot bouncing. Rogers got a hand at it, runs it down, gets it back in, but it's taken by Nichols. Nichols has it again. This time he's going to drive inside, dishes off to Price. Price pulling up, has it go in. Nice speed from Nichols. Price in the lane for two. Now the full court points pressure. For Price. 45 40 Notre Dame, 3 45 to go. Reddick trying to get the bounce pass into Rogers, but it was late intercepted. Doing it. A little late on that pass. Nichols got there in time to make the interception. We still got three and a half minutes. The crowd's getting into the game here. Is it Jasper needs a score here to get back real tight? Nichols on top. Got to look that time. There's He's got the basket. First three point basket for JT here in the second half. Thomas dishing off. Reddick doesn't go in. It comes off the rim. Reddick again. He's getting it on the putback nice this time. Rebound there. Reddick missed the first one, stayed with it, got the rebound, and put it back in for a four point. Notre Dame, it's 47 43. Yeah, it was the full court pressure, which Notre Dame went right through. Nichols again, that one coming up short, bounced around, taken by Fanara. So they Notre really Dame haven't changed their philosophy. Lead. They still put it up. First good look they get, it goes up. They've got to be careful here now with the foul situation. Fanara with the shot. And that's back to a six point margin. 2.40 to go. Benara with eight points in the game. Time and now out, JT. JT taking the timeout. Tom Price taking the timeout as he finds his team down by six. Well, Jasper came back and cut it to two. And then baskets by Reddick and Fanara gave Notre Dame the six-point lead. So it's been back and forth there. Yeah, one thing with the way Jasper Trusberg plays, six-point lead is a two-trip down the floor for them to tie this game back up. Clock is stopped with 2.36 to go here. Notre Dame on top by 6.49-43. Both teams with identical 22-0 records coming into today's game. Now the last couple of times that Jasper Trusper had gone to their full court press, Notre Dame has gone right through it very easily, and they have to be careful that they don't uh, you know, foul them down there in the backcourt because Notre Dame is going to get the bonus right now. Well, actually, both teams are now. They've caught up in fouls, so they're both going to be on the foul line. Take a look at the Notre Dame bench. There's Kevin Rogers right there. He's got the blue shirt. You can see the walking cast, the walking boot that he has on. He broke that ankle in the game against DeVoca. So in the second half, now Mike Capone has not made a substitution. He stayed with the starting five. In the first half, Danny Kaufman came in and spelled Sisson for some of the first half of play, but he stayed with Neither the starting five. Neither team's used too many players. I think maybe seven from, uh, there's Bullock with a jumper in the lane, short. Locked down to two minutes and 20 seconds. 49-43. Notre Dame. Here's Thomas. He's got an opening. Thomas getting inside. And he was Butler fouled. fouled him. I think it would have been a layup at the end. Derek Butler picking up his third foul of the game. Eighth team foul on Jasper Trusper. But actually, JT's done a good job. Like they, were, they put Notre Dame in the bonus back in the end of the third quarter. And that's their first foul since then. And, and that was free throw coming off the front no of the No damage rim. on that one. In fact, that was probably a good move by Butler because Thomas had a quick uh, open lane to the basket, so. I would think that Jasper Trusper is going to try to free up either Price or Nichols. Oh, there's, there's Butler. Butler. He's going to take it. Ball has a funny rotation on it when he shoots it. Kind of had a, like a, a little, little side spin, spin on yeah. it, didn't he? Yeah. You want to get that perfect backspin on it so you get more of a bounce. You got that side spin if it hits. Notre Dame's really going to take a timeout here. Well, Notre Dame now, you said, taking a timeout. They have a six-point lead. I think Jas Jasper Trusberg needed a score down there that last time to, to tighten things up a little bit. I think you'll see maybe Notre Dame go to a little delay here, try to run some time, get it down close to a minute on this possession. Now the clock is also an enemy of the of the Wildcats. So as long as for Jasper Trusberg, they can stay within six. <laughs> If they can hit those three, that, they can tie the game up in a hurry. But again, as you said, the clock starting to wind down. It's stopped at 147. And I think, as you just said, we'll see Notre Dame take as much of that 45-second clock as possible unless they get that real good open well, if shot you get the inside. back door layup or something like that, you got to take it. But they'll just spread the floor and try to run their offense and either make 
make uh, Jasper Trusberg foul them or wait till it gets to inside 10 and then go for a, for a shot there. So, And the next Jasper Trusberg foul, if it's not a shooting foul, Notre Dame still with one and one, but after that, it'll be double bonus situation. It's JT with eight team fouls right now. We know that Jasper Trusberg can score quickly. We saw that. So 1.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. Fenaro with the ball. Inside to Reddick. Reddick reverse layup. Has it. Eight-point lead now. But then that play was set up during the timeout. Reddick taking it right to well, the basket. Well, you notice they gave Fenaro the ball out front, which hasn't happened most of the time today. They, he was, there's a long shot by Nichols. It's Nichols. missed. Big rebound here. And Sisson coming up with it for Notre Dame, but it was knocked away. They're going to say it's off of Sisson. Price was there on defense, tapped it off. It must have gone off of Sisson's leg. Yeah. Good, good break for JT because they need the ball now and they need a basket here real quickly. I was going to say they were probably looking for Price or Nichols and before I got it out of my mouth, Nichols shot the ball. Van Skyver back into the game. There's Here's Price. Price. Doesn't go. Ball on the floor. Thomas Otis. has it. Thomas up quickly to Rogers. Rogers lost the handle. Oh, Rogers crashes into the support, but he looks to be okay. He lost it. It was a good bounce pass from Otis Thomas, but Rogers just couldn't get the handle on it. Substitution for JT. The bottom of that support is padded pretty good. Rogers crashing in pretty hard to it, but he got up right away, so he looks to be okay. I think he, I didn't hit his neck or his head. I think he just hit it with his back, so it probably wasn't as bad as it could have been. JT, though, they're needing some points probably on this trip. They're down by eight now, 51-53. Kicked out to Nichols. Nichols going to drive inside. Now he'll kick it back out. Sisson coming out on Butler. Butler shot off the front of the rim. Rogers had it, knocked Butler out of bounds. Butler stepped on the out of bounds and maybe turned his ankle on the... On the end of the court there. We're inside one minute now. 59 seconds remaining here. Looks like JT's going with an offensive defensive type substitution here between Van Skyver and Button. Van Skyver back in right now. Sisson with the ball. 57 seconds. Clock running. Here's Reddick. Now they'll definitely run some clock if we're inside a minute. They're not going to look for anything except the clock to run out and then maybe get a foul here. If, if JT's going to foul him, they better do it now. There we go. There's no sense letting 20 seconds run off and then foul him. Chris Nichols picking up his third foul. And again, the substitution being made. Van Skyver out of the game. Rodgers at the free throw line for Notre Dame. One and one. And the shot's the, missed. Next time it goes to two, but at least they didn't get hurt on the last two one on ones. There's Price moving down the court in a hurry. Intercepted. I think he lost the handle and tried to get the pass back, but tried to foul Thomas. Thomas. There's a foul. And now Thomas by the free throw line. And it is double bonus. That was the 10th team foul. But things looking good for Notre Dame right now. They have an eight point lead, and there's only 35 seconds remaining in this basketball game. So Jasper Trusper get a two point lead as they hit a basket right before the horn. They took a 22 to 20 lead in at halftime. But right now, Notre Dame has stretched it out to an eight point lead, only 35 seconds left. And if Thomas can make both these free throws, they can open it up to 10. First one though, off the back one. of the rim. JT's taking a timeout. I think that's their last timeout. So after the timeout, Thomas will get one more. It's a reminder coming up. Tomorrow night, more high school sectional basketball action here on Cable 5 is at 8 o'clock. We'll have the replay of the Oakfield, Alabama Lions game. And then coming up Wednesday, it'll be Perry and Warsaw right here on Cable 5 at 6 o'clock. And the Elba game will either be Wednesday or Thursday. That's to be determined yet. But the Elba replay will be on either Wednesday or Thursday. If it's Wednesday, it'll be 7.30. And if it's Thursday, it's going to be 8 o'clock. 51-43, Notre Dame on top. And the way it looks right now, Rick, Notre Dame will be playing Wednesday night in the uh, Class D playoff to represent Section 5. They'll go against the winner of, of the game played Saturday between Romulus and Elba. And that game, I think, is scheduled for 545 at the War Memorial, part of a triple header. Check the time. I'm not sure. It's either 515 or 545. Now, there was a question on whether today or today's Last Saturday's game, the one we're doing right now, was an 11 or an 11.30 start. So here's Thomas at the free throw line. He'll get one more. 
Second one's on the way. That one's short, but Reddick with the rebound in the basket. So that worked out for Notre Dame as Reddick stepped inside. And it's a 10-point lead with only 25 seconds. Butler has his trip, and I think this game is done as Thomas gets the layup for Notre Dame. And it's now 55-43, only 19 seconds left. And I think time has run out on Jasper Trutsberg. Nichols will take the three. He has it. Have no timeouts. Down to seven, six, a nine point lead. We're down to five seconds. So Notre Dame is going to win another sectional championship. And it's possible they could get a chance to avenge last year's loss to Romulus in the playoff game on Wednesday night. That's, of course, if Romulus defeats Elba in the Class D finals later today. Number 22, Bernard. So Notre Dame now with everybody away from the basket. Bernard at the free throw line. It's a good thing Notre Dame hasn't needed these foul shots here at the end. They've missed quite a few of them. But they've been able to rebound them or get a uh, second opportunity, so it hasn't hurt them. Second one by Fanaro also missed, but as you said, it's not going to matter as we are down to 3, 2, 1. Ball game is over. The Notre Dame Irish coming onto the floor with a 55-46 win over Jasper Trusberg. So Notre Dame... Moves its record at 23 and 0. Jasper Trutzberg is going to end their season at 22 and 1. An outstanding season, nonetheless, for the Wildcats for Jasper Trutzberg. But the Notre Dame Irish coming away with a nine-point win. Their season continues. Now they'll quickly bring the table out with the T-shirts. The gym bags, the hats, and about everything else they're going to hand out here. Some plaques and everything. It's a, it's quite a for the winning team. It's it's a pretty good haul as far as merchandise goes. And we talked about this last night about how Section Five runs this thing at a at a first class way. And uh, I think all the kids really look forward to getting down here and playing. Some of the Section Five staff out there on the floor with the uh, green jackets and some of the other people representing some of the corporate sponsors who are involved, like Coca Cola and uh, Premier Sports, Tops Markets. Burkett Mills, I'm sure I'll forget somebody, but most of them have their signs along the, the uh, press table over here. Players are exchanging handshakes as the game uh, ended. Jasper Trufer has got to be disappointed to go 22-0 and and then get beat in the finals and end their season so abruptly, but that's the way it works. Well, you knew coming into today's game that at the end of it, one of the teams was going to have their first loss of the season. As and I the mentioned, season would be over, right? Right. Not only do you lose a chance for a sectional championship, but you also lose a chance for an undefeated season all in one game. But I, I think coming in, though, you talk to you, both coaches, they'd like to take the chance to come in undefeated. Oh, yeah, to certainly. Have no their question about continues. that. We're going to have some of the hardware handed out here now between the, uh, they give the top seat and the plaque, which I think probably goes to Notre Dame because they play maybe a little bit. Right, they, Notre Dame coming in was the number one seed. And as you said, sectional points based on strength of schedule as well. If you play a, a larger school and win, you get more points for something like that. Well, where of course, Notre Dame played Batavia, which is a, a B school, and I think they probably played Attica for sure. So it's, uh, those will give them some extra points and make them the number one uh, seed. And that's that was the difference. Both teams 22 and 0, but Notre Dame with more sectional points coming in. So they were seeded number one. Jasper Trutzberg was seeded number two. And held true, though, to, to form as the number one and number two seed team here in the finals today. Each year, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Rochester awards a plaque to the number one seeded team in each of the eight classifications. So the first award given out is the number one seeded plaque that we'll be giving to Notre Dame. Mike Rapone, earlier this year, Larry picking up his 300th coaching win. Mike's had a fine career at Notre Dame. He's brought, kept that program at a very high level for, I think he's been there maybe 18, 19 years now. And uh, they've always been very well represented. That's one thing. You go back over the years, Notre Dame's had some good coaching at that school, and Mike continues it. No question. I've always said I think he's probably, probably the top coach in the, the area. There are some good coaches, but I think Mike, if not the top, definitely one of the top couple. And now going to be the Coach of the Year award. Marcus is presenting a one-up 
class to the team in each division. Finishes runner up in that class. Well, the captains of the Wildcats of Jasper Troopsburg, please come forward to accept the top. Jasper Trusper getting the runner-up award presented by Tops Markets. We were just looking through the section book here, and Notre Dame does have the best winning percentage for any school in Section 5 since 1975. They've won 331 games and lost only 75. So that's a percentage of about .815. That's pretty good. There's another look at Kevin Rogers from Notre Dame. Again, the Rogers injured as he has the fractured ankle. Microphone. Normally being able to go to Rogers is a six-man in. Unable to do that as he is going to be out. And now they'll go through the Jasper Truesburg lineup to bring them out to give them their certificates and t-shirts. And they'll do the same for Notre Dame. Then we'll have the naming of the all-tournament team along with the most valuable player. Gives a chance here later to recap the scoring here in today's game. We'll start off with Notre Dame, who was victorious. Paul Rogers. The leading scorer in the game as he finished with 17 points. It was Rogers, though, Larry, who turned this game around in the third quarter. In the third quarter, he scored nine of his 17 points. Didn't score in the fourth, but Rogers with a huge third quarter turned the momentum into Notre Dame's favor, and they went on to the victory. Also for Notre Dame, Mike Reddick with another big game as he finished with 15 points. Otis Thomas with 11. Vinny Panara finishing this afternoon's game with eight. And Mike Sisson with four points here in the second half to round out the scoring for the Irish. For the Jasper Truthburg Wildcats. Leading the way it was Chris Nichols as he finished with 16 points, including four three-pointers. Sam Price finishing with 13. Derek Butler with nine. Even Bullock finishing the game with seven. And Chris Foster came, uh, finishing the game with one point to round out the scoring for Jasper Truthburg. As you said, Notre Dame, I think, making the adjustments in the second half, extending that zone a little bit. I thought that was a real key factor there that they came out and they picked up a little bit earlier in their zone and then they went back into their 2-3 matchup and, and they didn't give Jasper quite the easy looks that they got in the first half. They had to work a little bit harder to get open, maybe a foot or two deeper on the, on the, uh, against the zone and of course that proved to be a factor in the second half. So that's what makes Coach Rapone one of the top coaches. He makes the halftime adjustment like that and you know, I've covered a lot of Notre Dame games and especially here. It seems like he's here about every year, every other year. Well, we're just, again, looking at the book here, Notre Dame is, this is their, uh, I think it's their 11th appearance in a championship game. So that's, they've been here quite a few times, as you said. Actually, the first game I ever did here was back in 84, and Alex Seppi hit a shot with about two seconds left on the clock for Notre Dame to give him a win. That was 13 years ago. Well, they've been here, this is the 11th time since 1975. We don't know all the exact years, but that's quite a, quite a good record. And especially for Notre Dame being a small school, they only play the finals here. They play the semifinals somewhere else where a lot of the schools play the semifinals here too, but the Class D is only playing the finals here. They're going to give each Notre Dame player now the uh, individual awards that they all receive. Some of the nine starters coming out first. Again, more high school basketball coming up here this week right here on Cable 5. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, it'll be the replay of the Oakfield, Alabama Lions game. And then Wednesday at 6 o'clock, Perry and Warsaw. That's, that's going to be a huge game, Perry and Warsaw, the, the rivals as it is. And neither, neither school has ever won a section of title, so somebody's going to win one for the first time there. Speaking of top coach in the area, Dave Gillette doing an outstanding job down in Perry as he does every year, and he has his team here at the War Royal for the finals again. And then the Elba replay will either be Wednesday or Thursday night. In just a few moments, we'll have the naming of the all-tournament team here. And this is where you normally shine, but again, the all-tournament team is based on the three games that... Yeah, we don't, we, again, be, being only able to see the finals uh, in this class especially, it's kind of hard to predict who they'll choose, but usually they take one, one player from some of the semifinal teams that lost, and then a couple players from each of their finals teams, and then the MVP traditionally has come from the winning team, so we'll see. I would think Rodgers has got to be a strong candidate based on his performance today. And, you know, Reddick's got to be Reddick, included. Maybe even Panero. He did a lot of rebounding for him. And uh, probably maybe Price and Nichols have got to be candidates from Jasper Trusberg. 
You know, Notice Thomas doing a good job running the 4-4 four, four Notre Dame, so I'm sure a few of those players we'll see from Notre Dame on this team. Paul Rogers wins the Sportsmanship Award. Right, new award they put in a couple years. Was it last year they put this in? I'm not, I know it was in last year. I'm not sure if it was in before that or not. Paul Rogers picking up the Sportsmanship Award. There's a look at Paul. And now we'll have the all-tournament team. So Vinny Fanara does make the all-tournament team. Well, he made a couple of big baskets, plus I think he did a good job on the boards for him. So he had a huge game on the boards for him, finishing with eight points. There's one from one of the, the teams that lost in the semis from Genesee Valley. From Jasper Truthsburg, Derek Butler. Derek Number 32, Butler yep. From Jasper Truthsburg. Butler finishing with nine points in today's game. From Notre Dame, Mike. Reddick. Mike Reddick. Looks like Rodgers might be a strong candidate now for MVP. Yeah, because I was kind of leaning on Reddick again, not seeing the first two games, though, but... Even Bullock from Jasper Truthsburg. Well, they got room for a couple more here. We got five counting the guy from Genesee Valley. From Jasper Truthsburg, Chris Nichols. Chris Nichols. Yeah. And it's Paul Rogers getting the most valuable player award. Kind of surprised Sam Price left off. Yeah, the well, team. again, we don't see all the games, so we don't know. He definitely was one of their main players, but uh, over the course of the tournament, they compile the points and the votes, and that's how it comes out. There's always somebody who could have made it or should have made it in some people's minds, but they do a pretty good job. But Rogers in the third quarter, the key for Notre Dame turning this game around as he scored nine of his 17 points in the third quarter. Notre Dame had trailed at halftime 22 to 20, and they outscored Jasper Truesburg 18 to 10 in the third quarter. Rogers with nine of those 18 points, and Notre Dame going on to a 55 to 46 win. Again, this reminder, more high school basketball action coming up tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. It'll be Oakfield, Alabama going up against Lions, and then on Wednesday at 6 o'clock, Perry and Warsaw, and then Wednesday or Thursday, we'll have the elbow replay. So for Larry Reed, I'm Rick Krasinski. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.